Hello and welcome to Algebra 1 Lesson 2. In this video we're going to learn about equations. So in our last lesson we learned a lot of definitions that were going to help us out throughout our study of algebra. Two of those definitions that we're going to review here, one would be that of a term, right? A term is a single number or a number that is multiplied by one or many variables and those variables can be raised to powers. Now, we also have something known as an algebraic expression. And an algebraic expression is a single term, right? So it could just be one term, or a collection of terms separated by plus or minus signs. All right, now let's move on and talk a little bit about equations. So an equation is a statement that two algebraic expressions are equal. All right, so this next point is going to be very, very important. An equation always includes the equality symbol. So always includes the equality symbol. So when you've looked at the algebraic expressions, we only put an equal symbol in once we get a value for it, right? So as an example, let's say I had something like 3x minus 4. This is an algebraic expression. This is an algebraic expression. Now, I can't really do anything with this. When I have an algebraic expression, I can simplify it or I can plug in for the variable if you give me a value. So if I said let x equal 2, I could plug a 2 in there and I could evaluate, right? And in that particular case, you might see an equal sign because I'm saying, hey, if x equals 2, this algebraic expression is equal to this value right? But it didn't start out with an equal sign, right? There's nothing there other than 3x minus 4 at this point. So that's an algebraic expression. An equation is going to look like this. We have 2x is equal to 8. So that's the main difference. If you're just starting out in algebra and you get a test and you see 2x equals 8, well, okay, it has an equal sign to start. So this is an equation. This is an equation. That's your number one way to tell, right? It's got an equal sign, it's an equation. You see something like 7x squared minus one. Okay, no equal sign. This is an algebraic expression. So let's talk a little bit about equations now. And we're not gonna get to solving equations until the next lesson. We're just gonna learn some of the basics of equations now so that we can just kind of lightly introduce the concept to ourselves. All right, so we start out with this 2x equals 8. So for an equation to be true, the left and the right side must be the same value. So if I look at the right side, the value is 8. It's just a number, the number 8. If I look at the left side, I have a 2 times x. I have 2 times x. So what you have to ask yourself is what value, what value can I substitute to get a value of 8? And why do I want a value of 8? Well, for an equation to be true, again, the left and the right side need to be equal. The right side is 8. The left side is 2 times x. So what I'm saying is 2 times some number is equal to 8. Now, can you think of a number that when you multiply by 2, you get 8? And almost all of you know that that number is 4. So in other words, if I replace x with 4, I get a true statement, meaning the left and the right side would both be 8, right? They'd both be the same value. So this is true, true if x equals 4. And the way you check it is you just plug in, just like we did in the last lesson when we're talking about algebraic expressions. Now we're kind of carrying that over. We're going to plug in a 4 for x, and we're going to see if the left and the right side are equal. So 2 times 4 should be equal to 8. And of course it is. 8 equals 8. And when you do this type of replacement, you're just looking for the same value on both sides. So 8 and 8. That checks out. If I had replaced x with anything else, I would have gotten a false statement. 
And the reason for that is there's no other number that when you multiply by 2, you get 8. Right? It doesn't exist. So if I was to pick, let's say, 3, for example, let's say I said that x was equal to 3. Well, 2 times 3 is not equal to 8. Right? I'd get 6 equals 8. That doesn't make any sense, right? Six and eight are not the same, they're not equal. So this is wrong, that's wrong, okay? So you're looking for the value for that variable that makes the equation true, meaning the left and the right side will be the same. In this case, that's going to be x equals four. All right, so now let's look at three plus x equals five. So again, I want a value for x that when I substitute it for x, I get a true statement. So three plus what, three plus question mark, gives me five, gives me five. That's what I'm looking for. Three plus what gives me five? Well, we all know that that answer is two. So if x is equal to two, I get a true statement, right? If x equals two, this equation is true. And again, just plug in for the x. So three plus two is equal to five. The left side will become five. Three plus two is five, and that equals five. I'm looking for the same value on the left and the right side of the equation, okay? If I would choose any other number here, I would get a false statement. Let's say, for example, I said that x was equal to, I don't know, negative one. So if I plugged in a negative one for x, I put three plus negative one equals five. Three plus negative one is two, so I'd have two equals five. So if you solve an equation and the left and the right side are not equal, you did something wrong, right? You need the left and the right side to be the same. This is wrong, wrong. The only value for x that's gonna work is two, right? Because three plus two is gonna give us five. All right, let's take a look at a little practice exercise. We want to determine if each is a solution to the given equation. So we're going to start out with x over 6 is equal to 2. And then here are the values that we're going to try out as solutions. So let me kind of write this down here. We have x over 6 is equal to 2. Let me scroll down and get a little room going. So I'm going to start out with the value of 5. So I'm going to say, is x equals 5 a solution? Well, to figure that out, I'm just going to plug a 5 in for x. So 5 plugged in for x over 6, does that equal 2? No, it doesn't. Right? It doesn't. 5, 6 is less than 1, so it can't be equal to 2. Right? So this doesn't work as a solution. Now, the next value they want us to try is 1. So I would plug a 1 in for x. I'm going to plug a 1 in there. And I'm going to see if I get a true statement. So one over six is equal to two. Is that true? Well, no, it's not. One six is not equal to two. So that doesn't work as a solution either. Let's try the last one. The last one is 12. So I'm gonna plug a 12 in for x now and see if that works out. So we would have 12 over six equals two. Well, 12 over six, that's 12 divided by six, that is two. So the left side is going to become two, and the right side is two. So the left and the right side are equal, they are the same value. And so yes, 12 is a solution here, okay? 12 is a solution here. So we can say that x equals 12 is our answer. All right, let's take a look at another one. We have three times the quantity 4k plus four, and this is equal to negative 84. So again, what I'm gonna do is take each value here and plug it in for our variable, in this case it's k, and see if we get a true statement, see if the left and the right side are equal. If we do, then we know that that value is a solution for the equation, right? So I'm gonna start out with negative eight, and I'm just gonna plug it in for k, and so we'll have three times this quantity, four times negative eight, then plus four, and this equals negative 84. So I'm gonna start out inside the parentheses with four times negative eight, that's negative 32. And then when I'm done with that, I would continue inside the parentheses, I would add four. Negative 32 plus four is negative 28. So this would be three times negative 28, and this equals negative 84. All right, so I know that three times negative 28 would be negative, and then three times 20 is 60. 
3 times 8 is 24. So 60 plus 24 is 84. So this would be negative 84 over here. And over here it's negative 84. So that checks out. So negative 8 is a solution for this equation. Okay, this is a solution. You can say k is equal to negative 8. Now, we'll try the other ones, but they're going to fail. So let's go ahead and erase this real quick. Put a check mark right here. Let's go with 7. Let's see if that works out for us. So we're going to put 3 times the quantity, 4 times, instead of k, I'm plugging in 7, plus 4 equals negative 84. 4 times 7 is 28, then 28 plus 4 is 32. So I'd have 3 times 32, and that's going to equal negative 84. Now, without doing the multiplication, I already know this isn't going to work because this is negative over here, and this is two positives being multiplied together. So even if the number part worked out, which it's not going to, we'd end up with a positive on one side and a negative on the other, so we know it's going to fail. But we can go ahead and say, well, what is 3 times 32? 3 times 30 is 90. 3 times 2 is 6, so this is 96. And that's not equal to negative 84. That's, that doesn't work. Right, this is wrong. So 7 is not a solution for the equation. So I can go back up here and I'm going to mark that out. That didn't work. Now the last value we're going to try is 0. So we're going to plug in a 0 for k. 3 times this quantity, 4 times 0 plus 4 equals negative 84. All right. So 4 times 0 is 0, then 0 plus 4 is 4. So I'd have 3 times 4 is equal to negative 84. And obviously that's not going to work. 3 times 4 is 12. And that does not equal negative 84. So the left and the right side are not the same value. right? I have negative 84 on the right. I have 12 on the left. Not the same. So this doesn't work. This is wrong. And so 0 is not a solution. So we saw that only k equals negative 8 is what works in our equation. Right? And it works because when we plug in a negative 8 for k, we get the same value on the left and on the right side. Again, that value is negative 84. All right, let's take a look at another one. We have n squared equals 8n. So here's our proposed solutions. We have negative 4, we have 0, and we have 8. So let's start out with negative 4. So I'm going to plug that in everywhere I see an n. You have to be careful because in a lot of cases we're just plugging in once here we have two ends that we need to plug in for. We have to plug in there and also there. I'm going to start out by putting parentheses around negative 4. And then I'm going to square that. And this equals 8 times negative 4. Notice how I use parentheses when I'm substituting in. Very important here because I have a negative number that is raised to a power. And I don't want to make a sign mistake. right? Whatever value I have for n, in this case that's negative 4, I want to square it, so I need to make sure I use parentheses. Okay, so negative 4 squared is going to be positive 16. And we're saying this is equal to 8 times negative 4, which is negative 32. This obviously does not work out, and so this is not a solution, right? Negative 4 doesn't work. Let's try 0. So I would plug in a 0 for n, so I'd have 0 squared equals 8 times 0. And that is, in fact, going to work as a solution. 0 squared is 0, and 8 times 0 is also 0. So the same value occurs on the left and the right side. That value is 0, and so this is a solution. Right? This is a solution. All right, let's try 8 now. So we have 8 that we're plugging in for n. That's going to be squared, and then this is equal to 8 times 8. So 8 squared is 8 times 8, that's 64. And this is equal to 8 times 8, that's 64. So that works also. We get 64 equals 64. So 8 is also a solution to the equation. All right, let's take a look at one last problem. So we have x minus 6 over 4x minus 5 over 4x equals 1 over x. So we have a lot of places we need to plug into. So I have two proposed solutions. I have negative 1 and then I have 15. So for negative 1, we're going to plug that in here, here, 
here and here. So everywhere there's an x. So I would have negative 1 minus 6 over 4 times negative 1, then minus 5 over 4 times negative 1, and this should be equal to 1 over negative 1. So let's crank this out real quick. So negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7, so that's negative 7. Over 4 times negative 1, that's negative 4. Then we're subtracting away. We have 5 over 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And this should be equal to 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. So if we look, we have a common denominator right now. And so we can just say, what is negative 7 minus 5? Right? Just work with the numerators. Well, negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12. And so if I had negative 12 over negative 4, negative 12 over negative 4, that's positive 3. That's positive 3. Positive 3 is not equal to negative 1, so this does not work. All right, let's try 15 now. And again, everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in a 15. So I'd have 15 minus 6 over 4 times 15, then minus 5 over 4 times 15. This should be equal to 1 over 15. So let's crank this out real quick. So 15 minus 6 in the numerator is 9 over 4 times 15 in the denominator, that's 60. Then minus 5 over, 5 over 4 times 15. Again, 4 times 15 is 60. And this is equal to 1 over 15. So we have the same denominator here. What is 9 minus 5? That's 4. So we get 4 over 60 is equal to 1 15th. So at this point, it doesn't seem like we have the same value on each side, but if we were to remember that we simplify our fractions, remember that 60 is divisible by 4. 60 divided by 4 is 15. So this, I could cancel and make 15, cancel and make 1. So really what we'd end up with if we simplify that is 1 15th. So we have the same value on the left and the right-hand side, and so 15 is a solution for this equation. So we can go back up here and we can just put a check mark here. Yes, x equals 15 is a solution here.